Let me show you how this business works. It's very simple. Guys, you can copy this business if you'd like. Very simple business, very profitable. Yo, guess what, guys? A lot of you guys have been hitting me up, Reyes. Do something with food trucks. Well, I got you today because I got these guys right here. The whole, hey, you guys remember them? You guys remember them? Yeah, not only do they have a window tinting business, they open up their own food truck. Talk about entrepreneurship. And in this video, they're gonna give you the top five things you need to know before starting a food truck business. You ready, man? All right, let's do this, bro. Let's do it. So guys, in the top five tips to start a food truck, here's the advice that I'll give to you. Location, right? That's number one. Where are you gonna put this? Where are you gonna make an offering to people to stop at your place? Now you wanna kind of rely on maybe traffic passing by because that'll help. Um, but also, if you notice here, we're in what's, it's a food park that's already set up and there's other vendors here. So this location worked perfectly for us because people already come here and they congregate and they come to eat. So it makes it easy for us to kind of feed off of their customers, our customers feed off of their customers and it works, it's a nice little ecosystem. I heard location is one of the most important things when growing a specific business. The food truck business, it's all about location. Real estate, it's all about location. Finding single moms, it's all about location. Just so you know, you know, let me give you some game. The top three places to find single moms are one, the swap meet. Two, parking lots of prison. Three, the welfare office. You know what? Maybe I've tried it a couple times. Oh, pineapple? Right. So it's pineapple simple. juice? Pineapple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you allergic to coconut? Nah. No, my girl likes it when I drink pineapple juice. Okay, so this, no, is, no. this is pineapple juice here. Where's the bag of ice? Reyes, would you like to enjoy a pina colada? I'll take you on an instant vacation right now. Let's do it, man. I'm ready. All right, brother. Let's do it. All right, guys. Another thing is uh, sanitation. And actually, uh, especially now with COVID, people are more watching how things are being prepared. So a big thing is obviously sanitation, how you clean your products and things, wearing the gloves, right? Uh, and preparing it in a way that's safe for everyone. Let's go ahead and let me show you how this business works. It's very simple. Before we show you how the pina coladas are made, tip number dos is the easiest way to start your own food truck business. And what is that tip? Hey, down in the description, get my course. Hey, you know I give you that free 99 knowledge. Tip number two, renting a food truck. But how? You're about to find out. Uh, the other thing is rent your truck. You know, you might think you want to start a food truck, but you don't have 30 grand, 40 grand, 10 grand, 12 grand. Well, we didn't purchase this truck right out. We actually ended up renting it because this was these guys over here, old food truck. This was the first one they started with originally, and then they moved into this, and they had this truck parked. So this really jumped us ahead by months and also a lot of time that and money we didn't have to invest because it was already done. Uh, I'm, I'm be you know full disclosure for a hundred dollars a week. It's four hundred dollars a month to rent the truck from them. Then there's also uh, we pay for the space here. So all in to get this business started, it was a thousand dollars. We gave them four hundred, and then six hundred to rent the space over here and have that all situated. So for a thousand dollars, we got an entire business running as opposed to trying to buy a truck and outfit it yourself. I know, I know. You're thinking, but Reyes, how do I find someone to rent me a truck? It's easier said than done, but talking to other food truck owners and networking should be your first step. Step number two, pray to the entrepreneur God, Guy Fieri. The third step, if you have to, marry into a family that has a food truck business. And I know what you're thinking, but Reyes, what if they only have sons? That's when you really have to ask yourself how bad you want to start this business. The only thing that we had to purchase for this particular business, and guys, you could copy this business if you'd like. Very simple business, very profitable. We bought two blenders. We bought some umbrellas to put in the drinks. I'm talking little minimal investments, dude. All right, little umbrellas, make it nice and cute, and people love it, this is fun for kids. The pina coladas we serve are now non-alcoholic. If you guys wanna take this business model and do it yourself, don't worry about alcohol and drinks because now that's a liability for you. If people wanna bring their own booze or do it on their own time, let them do that. But minimal investments, we got some umbrellas, got some blenders, some cherries, yeah, pineapple juice, some coconut. So very minimal moving pieces here, guys. And, uh, but if I had a big menu, I wouldn't be able to fit all of that in a truck. You're working with limited space. 
All right, guys, here's something that I really want to emphasize. A lot of people think that when they start, uh, especially in the food industry, you have to have a big menu, and it has to consist of a lot of things. I disagree with that. This is my third, well, this is my first truck where I had two restaurants prior to this, and what's worked for me in the other restaurant is concentrating on one thing. In my restaurant, Connecticut, we concentrate on one thing. It's a fully loaded baked potato. People come from hours away to drive there. This business, we concentrate on one thing. It's pina coladas. It's something that it's in the name. It also describes to people what we offer. Pina coladas, that's it. Keep it simple. If you're good at, like I said before, baking the best apple pie, maybe you start an apple pie truck because people will know you for that as opposed to trying to be a jack of all trades have pies and this and that. You could start adding on to that later. I think you want to get known for that one thing and build up a following based on that one thing. And then if you want to add things that complement that down the road, fine. But minimal investment, one item, and a lot less inventory. You heard it from the expert. It's better to be known for one thing and be the best at that one thing than trying 20 things and have to carry more inventory, which means investing more money. For example, I also want to be known for one thing, and that is my mission to help as many people as possible become financially independent. And that's why I try so many different businesses to show people different options of making money. Now, ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? Let's say the food truck business. Do you want to sell apple pies? Do you want to give cream pies? I know some Japanese food trucks, they do buka cakes. I think that's how, yeah, I saw it online. But the point is, you could sell anything. All right, guys, so let's talk about uh, when you're starting this business up. You can't literally just pull up a truck and start serving out of it. I do want to mention that there are licenses that you have to get. Uh, so what you have to do is, wherever you're from, whatever your jurisdiction is, find out what it takes. Talk to your local uh, city hall or whoever hands out those licenses, the health department, and ask them, listen, I have an idea. I want to start a food truck. What would it take to do that in terms of legally? Actually, it wasn't expensive. It was a all together in like uh, fees and applications, a few hundred dollars, you know. All right guys, so here's another tip and trick when you're starting a food truck especially or any business that has to do with food because I'm entrenched in that. If you limit your menu, there's a lot less to buy when you have to go food shopping. If you have a menu with 30 items on the menu, well, you have to buy those 30 items to prepare, right? Here at this business, if you kept it very simple and it's just pina colada, so what do we buy? We buy the cups, we buy the straws, we buy ice, we buy pineapple juice, we buy coconut, right? So there's only like five things. Whereas in my other restaurants, when I had a big menu, it was about 55 things that we had to buy. So the more you have to buy, the more you have to spend. And now if certain items are perishable, it'll go to waste. So that's the beauty of trying to just concentrate on one thing. There's less moving parts, which means less investment in terms of the products you have to buy. The grocery shopping list is not this long, it's that long, and uh, it makes your life a lot easier. All right, she should be about done. And with this, Reyes, what flavor would you like? I have uh, you peach, we can do raspberry. Give me watermelon. Watermelon, awesome dude. All right, so very simple. So this is gonna be a watermelon pina colada. Here she goes. Looks delicious already, man. Bang. All right, now, guys, here's something huge that I want you to take into consideration. I could literally serve this to him like this with a straw and be done with it, but it's all about that finishing touch on whatever you're doing, something that you don't have to do that little extra that makes a big difference in your product so here's what we like to do just like you're on vacation again back to the little baby umbrellas right and this just makes people feel and this is an extra step that we don't have to do the product is done i could give this to you and collect your money and now that's the finishing touch guys that's the icing on the cake this is what differentiates you from the next guy because we didn't have to do this little finishing touch this is literally the cherry on top so whatever your product is, whatever you're going to be serving, try to give it that extra little touch at the end that people are not expecting. And uh, yeah, it's a home run. Let's see, let me taste it. Go ahead, brother. Get a taste of that. Vaca it's bomb. Vacation, vacation vibes or what? You feel like mm. on an instant vacation or what, brother? Bro, I'm, I'm not even going to record the rest of the day. I'm chilling. <laughs> Mm. Well, I'm glad you like that, New brother. bomb, man. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. It's, re it's refreshing. It's something different. Super refreshing. It's not something that you could just get anywhere. And that's the whole key. I think making a product that you can't just get anywhere. You're the only guy in town. Do you pay five bucks for this? I you mean, people pay five bucks for this? All day long. All day long. 
All day long. I think I'm in the wrong business. All day long. Raised Entrepreneur Food Truck. Coming up, right? Hey. Hey, yo, so I'm drinking these pina coladas. I, am I in Texas or am I in Hawaii? But this guy over here sharing knowledge, sharing some valuable tips. Yo, where can people find you, man? What would you like promoted? All right, guys, honestly, you could follow me and my identical twin brother on our entrepreneurial journeys. This is one of like four businesses that we're running right now. And uh, we show the day to day. Uh, you follow us on Financial Savage on YouTube. And I'm going to be uploading. We have all the behind the scenes of how we prepared this truck, how we painted it, what we did, the trials and tribulations, what we didn't like. So, yeah, Financial Savage on YouTube is going to be basically a vlog style documentary of the entrepreneurial journey. And uh, this is just one of multiple businesses that uh, we're going to give you a behind the scenes look at. So, yeah, Financial Savage. In the description below, go show them some love. Yeah.